a simple Twitter conversation between two people who have never met before today. I don't need that. We started as a Twitter conversation. We've never met that sits in the White House right now threatening our liberties, threatening our friends, our allies, the Muslim community, all of the people who have made this country what it is today. I came from an immigrant family many years ago, but that pain hasn't left my family. We are here today to give voice to the people who would otherwise be voiceless and to stand with them against the tyranny that sits in the White House. Woo! This is not about us. with white privilege to use it. Yes. 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 To speak up. Do not be silent. Do not allow your silence to give rise to that tyranny. The fact that this executive order was signed on Holocaust Remembrance Day which, by the way, which, by the way, did not even mention Jewish, our Jewish brothers and sisters that were murdered by the millions. And now they're singling on Holocaust Remembrance Day, they singled out our Muslim brothers and sisters that we have an obligation to speak for and to speak with it is a purposeful act of state-sponsored terrorism. We have an obligation. When we use the phrase white silence equals white violence, it's never been more true than now. Because what's happening is we have legal green card holders. We have legal visa holders that have already been approved, that are in this country legally. Permanent residents that own homes, that have children, that have spouses in the United States. <coughs> that are being turned around, detained and put back on the first flight illegally against court orders to their home countries, in some cases to places like Syria where they could be left to die. That is violence. We have a right to speak out. An obligation to speak out. I'm Rusty, this is Shelly. We're gonna speak for just a couple of minutes and then we're gonna give the floor and, and make sure that we give our Muslim brothers and sisters representation so they can talk about their experiences, what their life is like, what they're, whether they're feeling afraid and that sort of thing. I encourage all of you to, you know, our, us protesting and coming out today is amazing. You know, I don't know about you, but when I come home and I sit in front of the TV, I felt so much despair at times. And I feel like I'm going crazy. But when we come and get together, we know that we're not crazy. We know that there's something wrong, that this is a violation of our Constitution. And when we gather like this, the government knows, Donald Trump knows, that there are more of us than there are of them. Just keep working. All right. Who wants to speak? <laughs> told that there could be counter demonstrators coming out. If that happens, this is a peaceful gathering. Do not engage. We will simply start chanting. Tell me what democracy looks like. This, this is, is what, what democracy looks, looks like. like. Tell me what, what democracy, democracy looks, looks like. like. This is what democracy looks like. So if they start engaging us, we're going to start that. And we're going to be louder than them because this is Richmond. Yeah. Our margin of victory in the last election in Richmond, Virginia. Virginia alone was larger than the margin of victory for Trump in Michigan and Wisconsin combined.
just, just speak as closely as possible. Yep. Hi, my name is Nora Ramadan. I am very young. Yeah. <laughs> that's better. Okay. Uh, my name is Nora Ramadan. I am a Muslim American. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's really projected. Yeah. Do you want her up on here? No. Yeah. Okay. Just yell as loud as you can. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, absolutely. We gather here today coming from all social classes. Our own trials and triumphs. What we have in the world.
exaggerated and misplaced, we give way to hate, Islamophobia, and xenophobia. I am here to remind you of what a true American stands for and believes in. The placard of our base of the Statue of Liberty reads, Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless tempest tossed to me, I lift my lamp beside the golden door. If the person sitting behind that desk on Pennsylvania Avenue thinks that he can reverse the true meaning of oneness without backlash, he is in for a great surprise. is what's important. The principles and morals that were instilled in us is what will get us through. It might not be easy. It might take us back 300 steps. We'll definitely move forward as one. We do not want to build walls. We do not want to deport immigrants or ban refugees of in need of new homes from resettling in this country. We do not want to impose the fact of your religious test on those seeking entry into our nation. <coughs> We do not want to create divisions in our communities by subjecting immigrant families, students, or other people to inappropriate and undeserved scrutiny. The actions of Donald Trump in the last couple of days undermine the very values and policies that this nation stands for and that have made America great. We will not stand for this. It's devastating, un-American, and shameful. Each of us must stand up and say, not on our watch. to come out. 
people who wear the scarf, people who have a green card. They were scared. And I'm here because I stand up for them today. Who's with me? We are going to stand for justice for all. Justice for one, justice for all, for everyone.
generations of immigrants. Three, not one, not two, but three. My mother's grandfather came here and served in the U.S. Navy and lived on Butte Street where the scope stands now. My grandfather came here on a boat in the late 1800s. He was a boy of 14 years, and he lived in the Adirondacks, and he grew up there and spent his life there. He was a business owner, and he was a productive member of society. He returned back to Lebanon, which was not Lebanon then. It was Syria, which is my name, Surya. My father gave me that name so I would never forget where I came from because he knew that this is where I would live for the rest of my life and the rest of our generation. Yeah. He then had three children, and one of them was my mother, who came here at the age of 17 to start her life. So she too, even though she was born an American, was an immigrant, is an immigrant. I grew up, I was born in upstate New York and moved to Virginia when I was seven. I have lived in the West End, I graduated from BCU, I lived in the South Side, I lived in Northern. This is my home, this is my country. And 
to all North African and other Muslim countries. We have constantly been blamed for something we had nothing to do with. When I was in school, I was very much so taught a different thing. When I was in public school, I never ever learned about how the Taliban came to be, how ISIS came to be, how Al Qaeda came to be. But I know about it. A lot of Americans, unless they are like me, they do not know. And whenever I try to explain where this originated from, people look at me like I'm a conspiracy theorist. I don't know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> to 
do with this terrorism. Preach! Crying 
because of fear and frustration. I am furious. Yeah. I want to stand here today to remind Mr. Trump of the oath that he took no more, no less than a week ago to uphold our Constitution, which I doubt he has even read. Mr. Trump swore to work to make this a more perfect union, and yet his divisive rhetoric has been done nothing but try to drive a wedge between us. Yep. Yeah. Mr. Trump pledged to establish justice in this land, not for rich white men, but for Latinos, for Muslims, for women, for African Americans, for the LGBTQ community, for all Americans equally. <laughs> Mr. Trump pledged to ensure domestic tranquility, and he has done nothing but drive us crazy with hysteria and divide us amongst ourselves. Mr. Trump, you have put, punished thousands of people coming here seeking a peaceful world to live in instead of addressing the issues of gun violence that have claimed thousands of lives. <laughs> Mr. Trump, you, you plan to spend billions of dollars to build a wall to keep us safe and to enhance our economy, and yet we have Americans in this country who do not have access to clean water. Yeah! showing up on our borders, then stop bombing their country! Yeah! If you want to build a better economy for all of us, then give us living wages! Yeah! It is us, Mr. Trump, that stand here today that are working to build a more perfect union, to establish justice, to create for the common defense, and I guarantee you, Mr. Trump, if ever you hear me, know that over the next four years, so long as you keep this up, you can be assured that you will have no tranquility for yourself. Yeah! And I see each and every single one of you out here every Sunday for the next four years, let Trump know we're going to give him hell. hell! Her mother and her were too afraid to come tonight, today. They were too afraid to speak because they were afraid for their safety. She left me a message to read to you. Her name is Omnia Taha. Many recent events have caused us to turn against each other, whether they took place halfway across the world or right in our backyards, whether they were political, social, or humanitarian issues, these crises have managed to become between us and divide us. America has always been known as a great melting pot, a place where any person could come and be accepted. We are diverse. Diversity is not always referred to religion, race, sex or orientation, but to also our ideas, beliefs, passions and actions. Now we live in a world where it's difficult to be our true and whole selves. We live in a world where the color of our skin defines who, we are, who and what we are before words can ever escape our lips. We must get past our many differences, for we are all human. We are all American. I am a Muslim female, my parents are Sudanese immigrants, and I believe that this yes, is not who we are. Together, we can fight back and win our democracy. Let's raise our voices. Let's speak up. Let's fight for justice. We must love one another and support each other, for we are Americans, and unity through diversity is what we stand for. 
Thank you, and God bless America. <laughs> you here, good God. <laughs> wanted to start a new life, but because the one that she had was trying to kill her. My mom came here because she didn't want to live in a country where her son was going to be threatened every day. And my mom is scared. My mom is scared because the country that she's lived in for so long, for 37 years, the country where she started a small business, got a degree from Harvard, Learned five languages. That country wants to get rid of her. That country wants to suppress her. That country wants to silence her. We live in a country where my sister can't get a government job because she can't pass a background check because she comes from a questionable background. That is not okay. Islam does not preach violence. We preach jihad, but that does not equate to violence. And I wish my mom could see all of you here today. Because it's not it's not about, you know, black or white. It's about inter this intersectionality that we have right now. Yes! And I am scared. I don't want to live in a world where my brother, who's in Pakistan right now, might not be able to come back. I don't want to live in a world where my brother has to shave every time he goes to the fucking airport. Yeah.
walk through the primary, I had the opportunity to welcome into my family many of people from many of different walks of life. LGBT, Muslim, Hispanic, transgender. Yes. But the place that rests on my heart right now is when I had the opportunity, the opportunity and privilege to open up the office in Dearborn, Michigan. And while we were out there, tirelessly, every day, we had some of the most intellectual, strong-willed volunteers to come through that office because they were working on hope. They were working on faith. They were working on the idea of a new tomorrow. And now I get messages from some of those volunteers. And the biggest thing is fear. Fear that they might not wake up. and be able to stay here. Fear that they may, fear that they may be taken away from their families and why? There's no purpose. This ain't right and this isn't what America was supposed to be. person that comes out here today because despite of what 
we all go through in our lives on a daily basis, it takes a lot out of a person to do this right here. Yes. To put down everything you have going on in your life and to come right here for a greater cause. Yes. And we're, we're all here, here for, you, for that. I come from very, I'm a multicultural child. And everything that I have seen my whole life has been nothing but warnings. Your parents, my life is different from someone else's. Nothing but warnings are not to look like this, not to dress this way. Someone might see you differently. Someone might look at you a certain way. And when I look around at each and every single one of y'all, I don't see Muslim. I don't see white. I don't, I don't see black. Each and every single one of us here has a different story. A story that is untold because we do not know the person next to us. But out of fear because they do not look like us, we rationalize something that is irrational. Everyone here has a story. Everyone. If you look and see that what we are fighting for is bigger, you have to understand that because we we can't keep letting this happen because every day we do this we come we fight strong but we have to realize we are the power of this country yes i'm a mass communications major and the one thing i've learned about the media is that they only portray the certain things that they want for more views. And those things that are more views tend to be the things that make us angry. Yeah. To make us not love the person next to us, but to hate the person next to us. To be scared of the person next to us. Preach. And we have no right to be scared of a person right next to me that I do not know. Social media, we own that. Yes. Yes. The fact that we are able to take a video and show that a police officer is not doing the right thing, the, the, the news will not show us that. But we can show each other that. And every single one of us came together to be stronger as one. We are stronger together than we are alone. Because there's, we can't fight with silence. That's right. And now every day when we live our lives, the only way I've decided to show somebody that I am not the clothes of what I wear or what you see on the TV as a thug or something like that, I treat them with the absolute most kindness. Kindness. screw you and they go after your family you tell them thank you I love you and God bless you or whoever but don't fight back because that is what they want you to do they want to give you a reason to make you look like the stereotype that they have you placed in and every single person here is better than that we are better than saying that I'm scared of this person because they look different. We should be able to love every single person as we are taught as children. Because when a child comes home and says, I met a friend, they never say the color of that friend. Yes.
Thank you for listening. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. If only you guys could really see yourselves right now. This is amazing. <laughs>
is not only for us. I want to take a chance to remember the refugees that are fleeing their war-torn countries, for the children of Syria who wash up ashore, are pulled out of rubble, losing their whole family, this is for you. For the children of Yemen, for Pakistan, where I am from, who are victims from this country's foreign policy and drone strikes, this is for you.
counteract Republicans. We do work, we knock on doors. We make sure that we hold, we go to town hall meetings to hold our politicians accountable. Yes. And we get out the vote, we register people to vote. So make sure you look up Indivisible RBA and become the next meeting, go to that meeting. The other thing I wanted to say is ACLU Mobile Justice. Download that app right now. And especially to my white friends, you have a responsibility to speak up when you see injustice. I've led a very privileged life. I haven't faced discrimination. My mom and dad are here somewhere. <laughs> but after the election, we've had extended family members cast us off, tell us that we're in a progressive cult. I've had friends <laughs> cast us off, tell, disown us. They won't speak. There, there's some, some of them that won't speak to me anymore. They won't speak to us anymore. But you know what? I'd rather hang with you. Yeah! yeah! appropriate that Soria caps us off. Thank you so much. Get involved. Go to work, people. All right? Be respectful and be yourself. Yes. 